All right, let's bring up this controversial little nutshell. Are you, are you in favor of Citizens United being overturned? Uh, Citizens United does... What? Well, there's two very different opinions on Citizens United. Okay. There's the popular opinion that Citizens United somehow gave corporations uh, the ability to spend all the money they want and tell people how to vote. And that, and that, and that people can't do anything about it. This is the thing. That I, I think that we were talking about this. I remember talking about this in my psychology class about a law that allowed corporations to spend whatever they want on political campaigns, right? It, it, it however, it doesn't apply just to corporations. It, it, it's the source of the super PAC stuff. It's where the super PACs come from. What the actual, uh, 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 well, okay, the, 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 the two positions are Citizens United should be overturned. To overturn Citizens United requires a constitutional amendment because the Supreme Court ruled that Citizens United violated, th that the um, bipartisan campaign reform acts, which were preventing Citizens United, a nonprofit organization, from airing a political movie. Uh, they wanted to show. They wanted to basically show a political movie. They said, and they were a nonprofit organization, and therefore, under the bipartisan uh, reform acts, they were a non-person entity, and therefore not allowed to. They said that's not right. The court turned them down. They appealed to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, uh, you're right, there's First Amendment issues here. You get, to sh you get to show your movie. Of course, two years later, the movie was irrelevant at that point. Uh, but this ruling was made in 2010. So, in the 2010 election and in this election, we are seeing things that weren't traditionally participating in the election process, participating in the election process. Corporations, unions, and nonprofits are allowed to have political opinions very adamantly. They don't have to sidestep. They don't have to tiptoe around campaign reforms. They can say, this is our opinion, goddammit, and just put it right out. Buy TV ads, buy radio ads, you know, participate in the political process. Uh, sounds like you're not too... It, no, I'll continue. So, it just allows nonprofits. It, it, it allow it basically what the ruling was, uh, and, I, and I'll just quote the judge, one of the judges here, because th they said it best. Um, I, I, I've brought this up to people who are fighting to get the constitutional amendment, to get support for the constitutional amendment to, that's going to be necessary to overturn Citizens United. Uh, I hate it when this thing lags. A second, people. Hello, viewers. We'll be back with you shortly. For those of you who wonder if there's been suddenly a fade to black and dissolve back in, it's because the computer was lagging for about five minutes here, and we don't think y'all wanted to watch the computer lag for five minutes. But I'm just going to quote directly from the ruling of the Supreme Court. Uh, they, they, they quoted some really interesting things. One of the things they quoted uh, was, you know, they quoted the dictionary. It said, liberty of the press in civil policy is the free right of publishing. 
Because the rebuttal you get from people who want Citizens United overturned, who says companies aren't people, that's the thing you typically hear on that, uh, is they're not people, the First Amendment doesn't apply. You know, the First Amendment isn't just freedom of speech. Freedom of speech, freedom of the press, the right of peaceable assemblance, and petitioning the government for grievances, you know, a.k.a. protest between those last two. There's four things in there. Um, and what it comes down to is do you think preventing non-people entities from being able to express their opinions would infringe on people's ability to have their First Amendment rights? To quote one of the judges, I cannot endorse a view of the First Amendment that subjects citizens of this nation to death threats, ruined careers, damages, or defense, excuse me, or of defaced property, or preemptive and threatening warning letters as the price for engaging in core political speech, the primary object of the First Amendment. That was what one of the judges who was voting, yeah, we should, this is, this is constitutional conflict. So what it comes down to is do you think shutting up non-people entities, even if we wind up shutting some people up, is a good thing? Or do you think the people who lose their First Amendment rights, as long as we shut up all the non-person entities, is okay collateral damage? Well, who, who loses their First Amendment right from, from shutting these things down? Basically, the way the law was worded, uh, and, and the only way you could force it, it said if you were a union, a corporation, or the other type of corporation, a nonprofit, the way you got to participate in the political process was you gave money to a campaign. Uh, if you were a nonprofit, you weren't allowed to do this in many areas. Yeah. And then you hoped that what that campaign did with your money reflected your point of view. In other words, you were not allowed to have a point of view because you, you were related to or strongly entrenched in a non-person entity. You, you, you lost that ability. So if a mom and pop forms a restaurant, they could technically be in violation for, you know, their, their kid goes and makes a political movie. Well, now you're in violation. You know, it's the, that, that was the thing. It was the same thing. Um, uh, blogs, if they've incorporated, technically the New York Times, newspapers, if you've noticed, newspapers have been being a lot more liberal in the last few elections than they used to be. You know, because they can't officially have an opinion now. Uh, that was the thing there. Um, it's a very subtle point. I can honestly see both sides. I know the side I stand on, it's... What about you? Do you think the collateral... I, I, I've kind of walked you into an answer now, which is not my intention. That's <laughs> fine. Um, so, as, as far as if they should get to have an opinion, I'm still not understanding who loses their opinion from it. Uh, you know, I, I'm just understanding that these corporations can now have this opinion, right? Mm-hmm. So who who would you say actually loses an opinion on not seeing it? By the corporations being able to buy political ads? Yeah. In my opinion, nobody. But so, the, the way I look at it is if you don't like what a corporation's saying, form a non profit or form a super PAC and say, I wanna represent the opposite side. <laughs> and so the problem that people see with this as I understand is that corporations have a lot more money than most people. That's their that's the argument they make. But the problem I see with that is I don't see people as some kind of mindless being that only follows whoever spends the most advertising. We have logical minds, and we can make a choice against all this advertising that happens, you know. Uh, what was it? In, in the governor of California, I think, what was it? Uh, who's, the, who's the owner of eBay that now runs HP now? Meg Whitman. Meg Whitman. She spent way more money than the other guy, and that actually made her lose. You know, I've heard from my psychology teacher what she did, what she caused so much, she spent so much money on ads that people actually got tired of her. Uh, and it made no one hear really what she was saying. Uh, so money isn't everything for human beings. We have 
at least a lot of us, have very analytical minds. And we could judge a lot of this stuff for ourselves and see, and we could understand what is an ad and say, okay, well, maybe the corporation has something to do with that. I do agree that an ad should say paid for by whoever. That's yeah, no, and honestly, to me, that would be a far better solution to this than trying to amend the Constitution. I was like, fine, make it law that there has to be a little disclaimer in the bottom of all political ads that say who is responsible for this ad. Yeah, and so, you know, I think that people, we should respect that people can make judgments despite how much was spent on one idea, that people don't necessarily just follow that. And... Well, and st ironically, SOPA is a perfect example of that. Yeah. That is. Because right. ten, the other side spent ten, more than ten times the money. <laughs> and so, you know, people, advertising really isn't a magical thing that changes ideas. It's very, it's very, uh literally, it, it's not that effective, you know, I'm, I'm taking a class on it, and it's really a numbers kind of thing. Uh, it, especially in its current form. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a metric guessing game at best. And, you know, these, it, 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 people might not, you know, understand that, you know, it really doesn't force a person to change his mind. It doesn't work that well if a person's against something. The chances are that they just won't you know, agree with it, even if someone does spend a trillion dollars on someone that wants you to do this, if you don't agree with it and you have good reasons in your mind, you probably won't do that. So, you know, I don't think that... Well, the concern people have, and I don't think this concern is inherently unjustified, but this to me is the primary reason people should be participating in the process more, and if you disagree, you know, go form your own super PAC and put an alternate message out there, and that is people with the right higgledy jiggledy can make something about something else. You know, it's like I said, the way this is presented is corporations are taking over the world. Are you for corp... Are, it's like the legal question, have you stopped beating your wife? Yeah. yeah it, it's, like, it's like, but no matter, I mean, te legally, if you, and neither one of us are married, by the way, <laughs> but the only answer we can give to that, yes, no, is no, because we don't have a wife, so how could we stop beating her? <laughs> and I think that's what they're concerned about. But the greatest way I've ever seen to diffuse that is someone, anybody else, really only, it only takes one standing up on the other side and going, wait a minute, they don't even have a wife. And they're like, oh yeah. <laughs> so the whole thing falls apart. <laughs> so... That's my view. I mean, I'm. I don't like uh, companies spending trillions of dollars trying to get whatever. However, you know, I don't think that I have a huge amount of respect for the human brain. You know, and I think that we don't need to be babied, and that ignorance is never the answer to get people to do something. That they should be bombarded with information everywhere. Never should we try to stop a source, and they should make their decision based on that. And, and, I, and I tend to agree with that. That's been my honest reaction to this. I thought everybody should, you know, embrace these tools. Uh, I, I, I've had more than one person bite my head off by pointing out, you do realize the unions actually spent more money than corporations, right? <laughs> And, and, and I don't have a problem with that. I don't have anything wrong with that at all. I think they can spend as much as they want. You know, same thing with the nonprofits and everyone else. Because I know the most money doesn't win. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's the false claim there. All right. So what's next? Uh, let's oh, by the way, I might only have you know the charger thing. I said my charger's actually broken. So. I actually had to hold my computer in a special way to get it to charge, and I managed to get it. You know, I have a big eight cell battery, and so it'll last a, right. a, an hour. So we only have about 13 minutes left before that's going to be gone, and I have to go to Fry's to get a new charger. 
Okay, I had that problem with the laptop a while back. <laughs> it's, yeah. So, you know, just, just letting you know so that I don't suddenly go off. Uh, okay, no. if you do, we'll have to pick up the rest next time. Uh, let's see, we, that, that cover in the Citizen United also covers the money in politics. Uh, sounds like we only really have time to get into one more thing this time. Uh, take your pick. Democracy or ta uh, the, the, the rich thing? Democracy or the rich thing? What's well, the, the, rich the, 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 the You know, the, the claim going around that wealthy people don't pay their taxes. Uh, you know, the whole 99 versus 1% thing. And the other one is, uh, I'm just going to quote, Restoring democracy, true democracy, <laughs> is the other movement going around right now. You know, the idea that we once upon a time had a true democracy where everybody got to vote and decide every little thing and, you know... Okay, we'll talk about that. <laughs> you know, for one, we don't and never have it. We're a republic not a democracy. I mean, a true democracy, people actually vote on every single issue. There have been countries like that. Well, and the other problem, in my opinion, with a true democracy is it's mob rule. Whatever the majority wants, the majority gets. And, uh, you know, the problem with a democracy is, I, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't necessarily think that's the biggest thing, but the fact that if we had a true Democracy, you would be forced by law to go uh, probably every weekend and vote on, say, 20 issues that you would be expected to be informed about. Every single person here. That's a true democracy. You have to vote on every little issue. Uh, yeah, and what we've expanded the government to, yeah, that would be the case. And so, you know, we found it a lot better. The United States said instead vote for people that we agree with, and they do the job specifically to know about these issues because the people can't necessarily be expected to both have a job doing something completely different and be educated politically that much to decide every little issue and they're going to just end up voting blindly and that's not good. So we've decided that it's better to elect a person and have him uh, do some of the issues and that was a lot more sane and I agree with that. Now, now, what the people who are in favor of a true democracy, ignoring for a moment the fact that we've never had a democracy, we've had a republic, <laughs> we've yeah. always had a republic, yeah. uh, they claim current technology has gotten to the point that it's possible for everybody to keep up with all of these things. Well, it's certainly possible for everyone to vote on these things. You know, the way I uh, imagine that is like, uh, you know, something would pop up on your phone randomly. Do you support Prop 16? And then you'll pro you'll press one of the buttons. You know, whichever one sure makes you go away, sure. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, yeah, yes. I don't know what it is, but yes, you know, they, they, you know, people aren't going to keep up with this. A lot of jobs that people can have, you know, some engineer is so demanding that you can't really keep up with this stuff. You know, keeping up with the presidential debates and all that is big enough that you can't expect to know what every single proposition for things that frankly a lot of times you don't care about. Well and honestly most people aren't keeping up with the presidential debate. Most people yeah. are keeping up with other people who are keeping up with it for them. <laughs> and so I really I don't you know yeah we definitely could do it in the sense that you know if everyone had a smartphone we could make something pop up every you know, day or more that would say, you know, you oh, here's your, you know, daily... Uh, you voting. know, I think you seriously underestimate the degree of this. Have you ever watched C-SPAN? I mean, come on, you'd have to make a decision every 15 minutes. <laughs> so, it's really, you know, we hire those guys for a reason, and having that kind of job decide those things and who think about these things, that's a full-time job. Uh, and you know, we can't expect people to be two people, you know. They're expected to know about who they're electing and their ideas. But we can't expect everyone 
to control everything simply because people don't have that kind of time and people need to be voting rationally and so we have to restrict it to you know what they can vote rationally on you know what they can reasonably be expected to know everything about so no a, a true democracy wouldn't work and you know it's so weird that just me saying that I can tell based on what you know society thinks right now that saying a true democracy doesn't work that just sounds bad to say but it sounds bad to say but the reality is most I would argue if you went up to 10 people randomly on the street in America and asked do you live in a democracy seven plus would probably say yes they probably think they do and the thing is democracy has such a huge good connotation with it that you can't say anything bad about it despite a true democracy and a republic is totally different things you know and that most people have never they don't really know what a true democracy means well a, a true democracy is whatever the majority wants the majority gets that's a true democracy if if the majority of people want something okay let's say 51% of Americans felt like Occupy. Take everything the rich have. The, the, the portion of Occupy that feels like that. That's what we would do. Everybody who has more than X, we're going to take everything you have. You're bad. This is what we would do. You know, regardless of whether that's right or wrong, that's what we would do. Oh, uh, uh, you know what? This religion's bad. Okay, let's go get rid of that religion. Everybody who's practicing this religion, we're gonna we're gonna re-educate them or we're gonna genocide them. You know, it's like what whatever fifty one percent want, you do. Especially in things like war, where you know people who know nothing about it would be voting. You know, imagine you know if we lived in a society where everyone voted if we wanted to go into war with another country. And as long as fifty one percent didn't like those people. Ridiculous, right? Yeah, yeah it, it's it, there's a. Well, I mean, even the president has has a cabinet people yeah. who people who your job is to know everything about this one thing. That's your job, and then give me a, a synapse of it so I can make an informed decision. That's what the the point of the cabinet is to the commander in chief. Even even our you know, supposedly quote unquote most powerful and really isn't the most powerful person in the country he acknowledges it's too much work. <laughs> so, so yeah. Alright. Alright. I guess we'll tail off there before your battery goes dead. There's not like yeah. there isn't plenty more stuff to go into on another point. Alright, stop this here. That's what it was. I, you know, I'm getting sick to death of people putting bad JavaScripts on stuff that just overloads. I, I, there's a JavaScript running on one of the things I had running that basically, you know, was not running smoothly. And hitting it helps. No, that's me trying to change the layering so I can get so I can actually see the part of the screen I'm trying to get to. While you're doing that, I'll talk about how bad chargers are. So my charger I've had like four new chargers in less than a year. And each of them has been breaking like every three If you're watching this 
during this time, you should probably put down what kind of charger is reliable. Because I've tried a bunch. I've tried Antec. I've tried. I have an HP laptop, and so I've tried the normal HP charger. Antec, the one I have now, is uh, okay. There we go. I got stupid control. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll go into the chargers in a minute. I may just cut that part out and like...